Hey there lovely people, it's Tal here over at the Gamers Rest with the playthrough episode of Necromancer Heretic, uh, a game by Junk Food Games which you can find over on the itch.io store under junkfoodgames.itch.io Necromancer Heretic. So I'm hoping you would have seen the um, review that I did previously, if not do go back and read that it'll make more sense as to the game we're going to be playing through today uh, because this is the solo playthrough so essentially I'm going to be playing through the game just to give you a showcase as to how it all works and how I would play it. Uh, it's a card game and part journaling game and the idea is is that uh, we need to try and bring back our dead prince lover from death. Unfortunately, the king does not want this and has sent three of his best guards to intercept us and try and stop us. The game ends either when we complete five ritual points or when we take ten points of damage. And the way that we gain ritual points is by getting 21 in our hand, hence the reason we've got the card deck. And the way the guards damage us is every other conceivable way. So, we'll see how this goes. Uh, as I said, this is part journaling game as well. And what we'll do is at the end of each round, we'll draw a card which gives us a prompt to discuss a point in our lives uh, as a romantic couple. With that all out of the way, let's get started on the game. So, the first thing the game suggests to do is to give you and your um, prince lover a description who are they, mannerisms, names, that kind of thing. So uh, for me, I am going to be Demore Thistle, Demore Silver Thistle, um, a necromancer of the First Order, but, you know, he's one of those nice necromancers. He doesn't do it for evil things. He does it to kind of help people talk to the dead to establish who murdered them, that kind of thing. Very much a, a man of the people, as it were. Uh, slightly older, an elf with chiseled features and uh, very slender and, I guess, graceful, as you'd expect an elf to be, with fantastic silver hair, which he wears up in a bun on top of his head, because I quite like that. Um, <laughs> very serious most of the time, except when he is with his lover and they spend time together, and then he does soften a little bit. But essentially... He is a man of the people and is very much about the service of the people within the king's realm. Now, his lover on the other hand, the prince who unfortunately has died, uh, and they are Jerick Waterwheel. Why not? Uh, Jerick Waterwheel, as the prince, was not particularly anything special. Not this handsome, dashing, charismatic hero you might find. But more, uh, again, that softly spoken, kind, virtuous individual who would always be doing things for the betterment of others. And that's why they fell in love with each other, is because they both had this common, I guess, goal to make things better for people, to make the world a better place. And after working together for many years to achieve that, they eventually fell in love. Unfortunately king not so keen on his son's uh, way of managing the kingdom um he much prefers things like fear and burning and taking everyone's money so the prince had to go he had to unfortunately be murdered and that is one of the reasons why the guards are trying to stop me from resurrecting him Okay, with that all out of the way, let's get stuck into the actual gameplay then. So, the first thing we need to do is we've got our cards here and we need to set up the board. So, essentially, we're going to shuffle the deck. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. We are then going to draw cards. So, I start by drawing five cards for myself. Okay, that's... I don't know why they're all like that. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, and five. 
three, four, five. Cool. And then we deal the guards one. Why are these? Right, there we go. That's better. Right. And those are the three cards for the three guards. So we've got a seven. So uh, guard one's got a jack of diamonds. Guard two has ten of diamonds. And guard three has the seven of diamonds. And my cards are the six of hearts, the seven of clubs, king of diamonds, king of hearts, and the eight of clubs. And that is our starting hand. Um, now, the thing about this game is that to start off with I don't get any cards in my actual hand itself so I've got to try and reach 21 in order to score a point but I don't have any cards in my hand at the moment the way that I get cards is by some of the actions that can be taken on our turns and we're about to move into the first turn of the game and that is what's known as the prepare phase so at this point here I could do two actions uh, I can add a card from my supply into my hand or into one of the guards hands or I can use a club or a diamond for their special abilities so clubs have something called unholy ichor so during the prepare phase add this card face down into a hand it counts as a 10 or an ace your choice you can change its value at any time and a diamond uh, use during the prepare phase, discard this card and add two cards from the deck into your supply. Now I could do the same thing twice if I want to, but essentially those are my choices. Now I don't have any spades in my hand, which would have been useful, um, but I do have hmm, two kings. However, do I want to put two kings in my hand? I don't know if I do. So I'm going to take the King of Hearts and the Eight of Clubs to give me 18. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a good, I think that's a good thing. So just checking through our cards here at this part of the round. Nobody's got 21. Nobody's gone bust, uh, gone over 21. So there's no additional. Uh, actions that need to be taken here I could if I want to take one damage and add a card from the deck to my supply I don't think I'm going to do that at the moment uh, but that is everything that can be done during the prepare phase so now we move on to the cast phase so we add a card from the deck onto each guard's hand that is currently below 17 uh, so at the moment, there every card's un, every guard is under seventeen, and we take this one by one. So there we go. So that's thirteen. That's twelve. And if my maths are right, that is twelve as well. And then I can choose to add. So it says that it says you then may add a card from the deck into your hand. Now then, do I want to take the risk? I don't know. I'm not convinced. I don't think it would be that helpful at the moment for me to take a card. Because I've got to get a what? I've got to get a ace to or three haven't I to get 21 so I'm not going to draw a card I don't have to it says may so nothing else is going to happen at this point here because nobody's gone bust nobody's got 21 and so we move on to the resolve phase so this says take one damage for each guard hand that is higher than your hand and just checking the hands 13 not higher than mine 12 not higher than mine 12 not higher than mine so we have taken no damage i've scored no points more importantly uh, but that then takes us to the final phase which is the journaling phase so at this point here we draw one card from the deck and this serves as an oracle and we're going to start with the four of hearts so it's a good job i didn't choose that otherwise i would have gone bust so 
in the journaling phase, uh, it says, if you've not received damage or earned any points during this phase, then the card will represent the present. So we've got the Four of Hearts. Uh, and on the table that reads, you hear the guards outside cursing your name. How do you respond? Mm, so I'm in the middle of um, trying to complete this ritual and the guards are outside. I guess there's a couple of things I could do. Uh, I will probably cast some kind of warding spell to try and reinforce the door. Um, but then I don't want to get too... I guess distracted from the spell just in case that causes me issues so I'll just try and calm my mind think about Jarek that I'm trying to bring back and try to block out the sounds of them cursing me in the background and just so I can concentrate and try and win through and you know bring them back from the dead unfortunately it does say that after I resolve this journal entry I take one damage now, I could, at this point, discard a heart to prevent one damage. Because you can do that any time. That's called Bone Arbor. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, this six of hearts here, I'm going to discard that. So I don't take any damage. So, after that first round, we're all good. So, let's go to the next phase, which is back up to prepare phase. So again, I could take two actions. I can discard a diamond. Oh, I could discard that king, couldn't I? Uh, to add two... That's right, isn't it? Uh, diamonds! Discard this card and add two cards from your deck into the supply. Yeah. So I'm going to discard that. So we get a 9, and we get a 10. Mm, not that useful. Um, so I've got to take one more action. I can add a card from the supply to my hand or the guard's hand. I don't have oh I've got a if I got a club uh, during player face add this card face down it counts as a 10 or an ace but that's no use to me at the moment because that would just get me up to 19 um, which doesn't help me does it okay uh well, in that case, the best thing I can do is add the... <laughs> what do I do? I'll have to add that 10 to somebody's hand. So if I add the 10 to the first guard, that means that they um, bust. So that in this game is what's called a death burst. So when a hand breaks, goes over 21, um, the hand is discarded. But I can take one card at random from the hand into the supply, and then the rest are discarded. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Or I can take one damage and pick the card that goes into the supply. Now I could, if I wanted to, I could pick that three, couldn't I? I could pick that three, and that would give me 21. If I took one damage. Ooh. But that would make sense then, wouldn't it? But then on the next round, I'm going to take a lot of damage, aren't I? No, it's got to be worth it. So I'm going to take one damage. Uh, 
so let's do that so I'm down to nine but it means I get the three added here 10 plus 8 plus 3 again if my maths are correct is 21 so I discard these straight away but I do get to add my first point to my score and then these get discarded as well because they went over uh, anything else I need to do nothing else I can do I've used my two actions uh, that's all okay so move on to the cast fade we had a card from deck to each guard hand that's currently below 17 which is all of them so guard one gets a six uh, guard two gets a two and guard three gets a three and then I can add a card, which is a nine of clubs. Uh, there's nothing else I can really do here. The only action I would have would be uh, if I had a spade, which I do, and then I could swap cards around, but that doesn't really help me at the moment can't do anything else there is nothing else I can do here so that then means uh, we move on to phase three which is rolls phase so I have to take one damage from each guard hand that's higher than mine unfortunately that's two of them so I am now down to seven points of health not great but uh, you know no risk no reward right Nothing else going on there, so we then move on to the journaling phase. So let's draw a card. The Queen of Clubs. And consulting the journaling section. So, um, if I... And, yeah. So, if I've earned at least one point during this turn, then I get to talk about the future. And as the Queen of Clubs says, you discuss the resurrection with the Prince. How do they feel about it? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I think they probably feel like they've seen... They've had an experience of the other side. And even though it's the briefest of experiences, I think it's probably shaken them a little bit. They're a little bit unnerved about what's potentially over there and it's going to take some time before they get back into you know normal life i think there is an element of they still see ghosts so because they've had that connection with the, you know the afterlife uh, as they're going about their day-to-day -day business they are seeing the ghosts of the past every now and then that kind of filter into their vision and it's very stressful and they are struggling with it mentally because it's a it's a long strain on it but the only thing that does help is whenever I'm around and they get some calm and some I guess a sense of relief because I know what they're going through being a necromancer there we go okay so let's go back to the top of the round and we go back to our prepare phase so i can uh i've got two actions i can add a card from supply to my hand or to one of the guards hands or i can use a club or a diamond ah okay i think we're on to a winner here clubs add it face down and it counts as a 10 or an ace uh, ooh, that's not quite enough is it um, mm, 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 ooh. yeah doesn't really help uh, 
Um, oh, hang on. I've got a plan. Will it work? It might. Mm. Right, here's my plan. So, I can give the 9 to guard 2. Now, they've currently got 14. So, adding the 9 will mean they'll have to discard their hand, right? So, the hand would get discarded. If I take a point of damage... So, if I go down to 6... And this is a bit of a risky strategy, but I'm willing to give it a go. I can choose which card I get. Now, if I take the two of hearts and add it to my hand, and then we discard these, that's my first move. My second move allows me to add a club face down to count as a ten or an ace. So, that if I'm not mistaken, 19, 20, 21. And that gives me a point. Hey, how good is that? Two points. Uh, and then we discard our hand. This does present me a slight issue in that I have no supply whatsoever. Oh dear. So, um, that's that phase dealt with. Uh, don't take any damage. Scored a point, yes. So now the cast fade. So, uh, everybody gets one card who's below 17. So, there we go. So that gives them 17 for guard one. Guard 2 gets the 5 of clubs, and they've got no other cards, so that's just the 5. And then, oh, we've got an issue here. Guard 3 now has a Queen, a 5, a 7, and a 3. So that is 17. Yeah, that's bust, isn't it? Uh, but I get to choose... Oh, I could do a random card, can't I? Okay, so I'm going to roll a dice. I don't really want any of those doesn't matter what I get at this point because I've got nothing else in my hand. So one to four. Um, so one's a five. Two's the seven. Three's the three. And four's the queen. It's number two. So I get the seven of diamonds. And we can then just discard this card. And then we give that card a guard another card. So he's got something in his hand. Uh, and then it's my turn to draw a card for myself. Ooh, nice. 17. Okay, so... I don't take any damage, because nobody has got more than me. That's pretty cool. That's a great result. And then we move on to the final phase, which is the journaling phase. And that is the Queen of Hearts. And because I got a point this round, it goes to the future. Okay, so that's the Queen. Uh, oh. Mm, so it's the same kind of question about the resurrection, discuss the resurrection. How do they feel about it? I think things have kind of got worse for the Prince. Um, he's started talking to the dead as, as if they're actually there um, so especially people like his family, like his mother who's come to visit him um, he's often found to be having long conversations with her now because at this point we're on the run because we can't stay in the kingdom because they'll just kill us both it can be a little bit strange for strangers to see him just talking to nothing um, and in more on more than one occasion it's got us into trouble where people think that there's obviously he's inflicted in some way um, and we've been chased out a number of different towns 
because they believe that we're cursed in some way. So he is currently rapidly deteriorating, deteriorating, deteriorating. That's the right word. Uh, and I'm trying to find ways to help them and um, save them. So the resurrection is not going to plan as I would have liked. Back to the top of the round. So we are back up to the very top to the prepare phase. So I've got my two actions again. Uh, I haven't got anything in me supply. So I think the best thing I can do is I can discard the diamond and put two cards into my supply. Really hoping for like it. Oh, oh, Ooh, yeah, okay. Do, 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 do. Mm, 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 mm. So Oh no, I've got no... No, that was just one move, wasn't it? Yeah. So I can add... a spade face down... and count it as an ace. So during the prepare phase, which is where we are, I've got one move left. Uh, that's 21. Again. Oh. Absolutely storming this. So, I only need two more points to win this game. Awesome. Uh, right, nothing else there for me. So, we move on to the next phase. So, anybody under 17. Now, the ace does count as um, either a 1 or an 11, depending. So, it could be 17. But, essentially, it means that I can draw a card for the... There you go. Ooh, so that makes that 20 by my reckoning at the moment. Uh, 15 for guard number two, as I've just drawn a king. And nine for guard number three, because I've just drawn a seven. And then my card is the jack of clubs. So, can I do anything uh, no not really there's nothing I can really do here is there right okay well you know we all knew this was going to be painful uh, so 20 is definitely more than me 15 is more than me 9 isn't so I take 2 points of damage mm, this is going to be closer than I would have liked so I'm now down to 4 health points and 3 points towards my ritual mm, not good not good at all I've got no heart, so I can't reduce it. Yeah. Okay, so we now move on to the Four of Diamonds. So, in the journaling, it says, use the future if you've earned at least one point during this turn, which I have. So, you found a place to settle. Where is it? Is it within the kingdom or far away? Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I think it's actually within the kingdom because neither of us want to travel f too far away because we still hold hopes that we're going to be able to save the people maybe an uprising maybe uh, taking the throne for um, Jerek but it is a proper tiny one horse town if you like Nobody ever really goes there. Nobody asks each other their own business. Um, nobody would recognise the prince. You know, even though his face is stamped on some of the money, nobody's going to recognise us there. Uh, and we settle down. And 
whilst initially we plan to how can we take back the kingdom and save the people kind of fall into everyday life as well you know all the stuff that needs to be done tending of the little farm that we've got spending some time together helping him heal because he's still seeing all the ghosts so I'm trying to find a way to help him work through that yeah so I think that's what happens there right okay back to the top things are getting tense now a bad round could end this for me so two actions hmm. Ooh. two actions um, I don't have a club and I don't have a diamond oh no I do have a club I've got the jack of clubs Uh, so counts as a 10 or an ace Ooh, I think I no 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 I didn't no yeah no I think I'm okay yes no it's all fine it's all fine I thought I'd messed up then but I don't think I have um hmm. so oh, if that ten wasn't I am a little bit in trouble here, aren't I? Um so I could I could add the 10 to the guard's hand to break it. I could pay one point to get that ace. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do that. That gets discarded. But I can then add the ace there. I lose a point. Mm. But I gain a point as well, which means I only need one more. Ooh, this is going to be tight. This is going to be tight. And I've got one more move. But I can't do anything, can I? Uh, I've got no supply, so I can't. There's nothing else that can happen here. And just you know, I used bloodletting to uh, I, to take my. Oh yeah, no, I didn't. No, I didn't use bloodletting. Sorry. Or did I? No, I used. Um, uh, I didn't use bloodletting. Sorry, I took the additional damage to choose the card from Dark Burst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oof. The, oh, this is going into the next round. I could die. I did, oh, oh dear yeah I could die in the next round depending on what cards are drawn right okay well this is it folks this is going to be the conclusion so guard number one uh, he gets an 11 guard number two he gets a four, bringing his total up to 19. Guard number three gets a four, bringing their total to 13. 
so it all depends on what I draw here this this is the this is the end I need to draw an ace or a heart if I draw a heart, I can prevent one damage, which means I'm still in it. Just. If I draw an ace, I tie with the top first guard, and I'm okay, because I only take two damage. But anything other than that, I'm stuffed. Here we go. Oh, it's the nine of diamonds, and... Unfortunately, if I had a spade, I could have changed cards, but the nine of diamonds does nothing for me. I can't prevent any damage. Yeah, I can't do anything. So we move on to the resolve phase, and I take one damage for each guard hand that is higher than mine. The ace is higher. One point damage. 19 is higher. Two points of damage. And unfortunately, 13 is higher. Three points of damage. So there we go, folks. Unfortunately, whilst trying to complete the ritual, I failed. Oh dear, so close, so maybe I shouldn't have spent that point to choose the card I wanted, should have thought about that maybe, but yeah, so, I have died before the ritual could be completed. So, it says, if you tragically die before the ritual is completed, use this prompt, describe the scene of your death, what goes through your mind at the end. Oh, well, I mean, we know the guards are outside. They finally burst through. I'm surrounded by them. Um, and there in the ritual chamber, they take my life um, midway through the casting. And it's particularly unfortunate because I was so close to completing the ritual, um, I could actually see his face that kind of um, appeared as part of the the resurrection and as I'm lying there in a pool of my own blood I reach out to try and touch him but his spirit just fades away as the ritual fails on my lips and he's gone and I'm left there my breath kind of struggling before I slip into the permanent end and unconsciousness and that's how it ends oh that's quite sad I don't like that I mean I don't like losing but I really don't like that but there we go folks that is my playthrough of Necromancer Heretic you might have heard my dog there being all upset at the end as well which kind of adds a, a additional flavour to it uh, but yeah, that is it. So, I hope you've enjoyed my solo playthrough of this. I hope it's inspired you to go out and get the game yourself. You can pick it up from Junk Food Games at itch.io, Necromancer Heretic, and do go and check out some of the other work they have over there as well and support them. Uh, if you want to support me, you can, of course, uh, like and subscribe. You can follow me across the social medias under The Gamers Rest. And if you want to check out my Kofi, you'll be able to see some of the work I do as a designer of tabletop role-playing games. Uh, and you can also see some of the interviews I do and more of the games that I've played. But there we go. That's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed it, folks. Do come back again next time where we will have another solo review and playthrough. Take care, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>